In the, um, let's start in the second period. If the demand is 144,000, the price on the spot market is 145, then the, uh, the cost is 144 times uh, 145 is 208,800, that is cost. cost. And uh, revenue is 144,000 times 122. So this one is revenue. And um, uh, the revenue minus the cost will end you up with the result. And that is uh, 33,120. So the, um, the result in the first one is 32,120. That is 33,120. And we will carry that back. So that is 32,120 divided by 1.1. 1 .1. um, what you did with the first one here, we also do for all the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 other possible outcomes of the decision tree. Here you see um, what it is, what it is, you see the revenue, you see the cost, and based on that you can calculate the result, or in this case we call it profit. Okay. Um, but now we have to carry it back, we have to carry it back to um, the note in period one. The um, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do now. So what we uh, what we do is we take the the first note, and that is the note with demand 120 and the price on the spot market 132 and we carry all these uh, all these uh, results we carry back you carry them back this one is carried back and this one is also carried back so this is One point one. One. Mm, oh no, that doesn't go well. That is the result. One point one. Results. One point one. And results divided by one point one. And we do so because uh, we have to carry the money back because money in the future is less worth money now. So therefore we use the discount rate, discount rate in this case is 10%, so K is uh, uh, 0.1. Let's go again to our calculation. Um, from the note uh, demand 120 and spot price 132 in period 1. There are four possible states in period 2. We evaluate now what the possibilities are. So, here you see our first result, our second result, third result, and fourth result. We add them all up. And 
Leiden, um, and we do it times 25. Um, it's times 25 because 1 divided by 4 is 0.25. 4 are the possible options. Um, all, the, um, uh, all the results carried back combined would earn you uh, uh, one uh, uh, 12,000 negative return. But at 12,000 negative return, um, we have to um, uh, we have to carry back, as mentioned earlier. So at first we add them all up. We uh, do it times 25 because we got four options, and that 12,000 we do uh, we divide by 1.1. So this is the carry back. Back from period two to period one. Um, that uh, the result is ten thousand nine hundred and nine. That's what we're going to calculate here with. That is what we carried back from period 2 to, to period 1. But in year 1, we also got uh, a result. Let's see here. Here we got all results. 1, 2, 3, 4. And we brought them back. But as well as in period 2 there are uh, revenues, there are also revenues for period 1. So now we're going to do exactly the same as with period uh, 2. We're going to calculate the result for this node. And that's what we're going to do now. Back. Um, so what we do is um, in that node the demand was 120 the revenue is 122 so this is total revenue and this is total cost Um, this will end us up with 12,000 of negative return. This 10,909 you find back here. As it was negative, the total return in this knot is 22,909. So now we brought all the um, now we brought all the uh, results back from period two to period one, and we added it up with the um, we added it up with the um, uh, revenue from uh, period one. Um, we have to do that for all our uh, all our decision knots. Uh, we did so. Here we got again twenty two thousand nine hundred and nine. Please recall from the first knot. We also do that for knot number two, three, and four. Uh, 2, 3 and 4 are calculated in exactly the same way and we do it times 25 again just like uh, the first one it's 1 divided by 4 
as there are four decision options. If we got, for example, eight decision options, it would be one divided by eight is 1.125. Uh, so the, um, the total add up revenues for uh, the uh, for decision not with demand 100 and the spot price 101.20 is uh, 3818 that 3818 we have to carry back recall what we did in the in the second period we carried it all back and we divided it by 1.1 so that's what we're going to do now also with this one this one with this one and with this one this was 3818 if we want to carry it back to a period 1 we divide it by 1.1 that's also what we're going to do with decision not uh, number uh, two. Divided by 1.1. This one is also divided by 1.1. And this one is also divided by 1.1. Now we carried all the uh, results back from period one to period zero the current period but as the same with the first decision knot also this decision knot will earn us a revenue that is what happens here we got and um, we got a demand of 100,000. The revenue is 122. That's our total revenue. And uh, uh, the, uh, the space we need in our warehouse is also 100,000 square. And this 100,000 square feet has the price of 120. So, um, this ends us up with a result in a decision not in period 1 of 2000. This decision, um, this, uh, ref, this uh, result of 2000, we add up with the carried back result of the other four knots in uh, period 1. And this all gives us the uh, total expected uh, present value of 5,471. And that is, um, that is the answer to option one. Option one was get all warehousing space from the spot market as needed. We calculated that now, and the, um, uh, the net present value was 5,400 and a bit. Um, we got it here, four and a bit. We also calculated for option two, and we calculated for option three. And um, if you got these options, then the uh, manager could take, is uh, probably best to take if all, the, um, if all the input variables are well, that he takes the, the option with the highest net present value. 
So what is this uh, decision tree all about? We want to calculate the highest net present value because that is the option we want to take. Thank you very much for um, uh, watching this video. If you've got any questions, please send me an email or come by in one of our Blackboard collaboration sessions.